You crack through your eggshell and take your first breath in the world. No, that's not right. You're a fennec fox, not some random lizard. Unlike egg-laying animals, you're born the mammalian way, in a dark burrow deep beneath the Sahara Desert, tiny, pink, and completely helpless. Your eyes are sealed shut, your ears already comically large for your tiny body. Mom gives you a few licks to clean you off, then nudges you toward her belly for your first meal. You wobble toward the milk source, competing with your siblings, usually two to four other tiny fennecs. You all squirm and push, fighting for the best position. Not exactly a peaceful first day of life. Dad's out hunting while mom stays with you and your siblings. He'll return with beetles, lizards, or maybe a small bird if you're lucky. Mom hasn't left the den since giving birth. She's on full-time kitten duty. The first two weeks of your life pass in darkness. You eat, sleep, and occasionally get stepped on by your siblings. Around day 14, your eyes finally open, and you see your siblings for the first time. They look ridiculous. Giant ears attached to tiny bodies. You probably look the same, but there are no mirrors in the desert, so you'll never know for sure. By three weeks, you're taking your first wobbly steps. Your legs feel like they're made of jelly, but you manage to stay upright most of the time. You explore the den, sniffing everything and occasionally tumbling over your own paws. At one month old, mom decides it's time for your first taste of solid food. Dad drops a beetle in front of you. It's still twitching. You stare at it, huh? confused. Mom sighs, then chews it up for you into a gross paste. You hesitate, but hunger wins. It's crunchy and juicy and nothing like milk. Not bad. The best part? That beetle contains all the moisture you need. Fennec foxes rarely drink water. You get almost all your hydration from food. At six weeks, it's time for your first trip outside the den. Night has fallen, cooling the desert to a manageable temperature. Mom nudges you toward the entrance tunnel. You hesitate, sensing the vastness beyond. Your first step onto open sand is overwhelming. The ground shifts beneath your paws, nothing like the packed dirt of the den. The sky above is enormous, sprinkled with stars. The air carries a thousand new scents that make your head spin. Your parents stay close, constantly scanning for threats. Eagle owls, monitor lizards, jackals. They all see baby fennex as convenient snacks. Time for your first lesson, digging. Dad demonstrates, his front paws becoming a blur as he excavates a beetle with surgical precision. Your turn. You scratch enthusiastically at the spot he indicates. Sand flies everywhere, mostly into your own face. You sneeze. Your siblings make that annoying <laughs> sound Fenix used to express amusement. Next lesson, hunting. Mom shows you how to use those ridiculous ears to locate prey moving underground. You cock your head, listening for the faint scratch of insect legs below the surface. There, you pounce, jumping straight up and plunging face first into the sand. You come up empty mouthed, spitting out grit. The beetle is long gone. Better luck next time. By three months, you're starting to get the hang of desert life. Your pink nose has turned black. Your fur has grown in properly, and you can now catch insects about half the time you try. Your diet includes scorpions, lizards, birds, and occasional fruits or roots. You're an opportunistic omnivore. In the desert, you can't afford to be picky. The days are for sleeping. Nights are for hunting, playing, and learning. You practice your pounce on siblings, dig practice holes, and occasionally fall into them. By morning, you're exhausted and ready for another day of avoiding heat stroke. At six months, you've reached your full size, a whopping three pounds and about 16 inches long, plus another seven inches of fluffy tail. You're now a high-performance desert specialist. You can jump three feet straight up, run at 20 miles per hour, and dig faster than seems physically possible for something your size. Those giant ears work as radiators, dissipating body heat when needed. Your coat, sandy colored on top and white underneath, provides perfect camouflage and temperature regulation. You can even close your ear canals and nostrils during sandstorms, a neat trick that keeps you from becoming a sand-filled fox mummy. As you near your first birthday, things get awkward. Your parents' tolerance for your presence diminishes daily. Competition for food intensifies, and play fights become less playful. The message becomes increasingly clear. Time to move out. One day, your father snarls when you approach mm -hmm. the family meal. Mom doesn't intervene. That's it then. Time to find your own territory. You slip away that night, alone for the first time in your life. The desert suddenly feels much larger and more threatening. Every sound makes you jump. Every shadow could hide a predator. You dig a temporary shelter, just a shallow hole, nothing like your family's elaborate burrow. Sleep is fitful, interrupted by unfamiliar noises and the constant gnaw of hunger. Finding a permanent territory becomes your obsession. You need an area with sufficient prey, suitable digging soil, and minimal competition from other Fenex. After days of wandering, you find a promising spot at the edge of a dune field. Not prime real estate, but it'll do. You spend exhausting days digging out your first solo burrow. It's nowhere near as complex as your parents' home, but it keeps the sun off and predators out. Each night, you hunt just enough to maintain your strength for more digging. Slowly, your new home takes shape. 
Life alone has its benefits. No sharing food, no fighting for sleeping space. But the silence is deafening, and hunting solo means no one watches for predators while you focus on prey. Loneliness becomes your constant companion. Then one night, you catch an unfamiliar fennec scent. Your heart races. Competitor or potential mate? You follow the trail cautiously, ears swiveling to pinpoint the intruder. It's a male, slightly larger than you, with particularly impressive ears. When you make visual contact, instinct takes over. The fennec courtship dance is an awkward affair. He prances around, ears flicking, making increasingly desperate vocalizations. He brings you gifts of food, a particularly juicy huh? beetle, then a small lizard. You evaluate these offerings with clinical detachment while secretly being impressed by his hunting skills. He's not terrible looking for a male fennec. After several nights of this ritual, you decide he's acceptable. The male builds a small burrow extension to your home, proving his digging abilities. You allow him to stay. Fennecs pair for life, and this one seems like a decent provider. Together you expand your burrow into a more elaborate home, complete with multiple escape routes and specialized chambers. Pregnancy hits you like a tiny meteor. For about 50 days, you waddle around with extra weight in a world where extra anything is a liability. Your mate steps up, bringing huh? you food so you don't have to hunt. The extra weight makes you slow and irritable. Everything aches. Finally, the big day arrives. In the safety of your nursery chamber, you give birth to your own litter of pink, wrinkly, ear-heavy babies. The irony isn't lost on you. These ridiculous-looking creatures are just as helpless as you once were. The cycle begins again. Motherhood is exhausting. Tiny mouths need constant feeding, and your mate can only catch so much. You produce milk that's specially adapted for desert survival, rich in nutrients and moisture. Sleep becomes a distant memory as your kits demand attention at all hours. The stress of protecting vulnerable offspring adds a new layer of anxiety to every moment. As the years pass, your reflexes slow, hunting becomes more difficult, and you rely increasingly on easier prey, insects instead of birds, scavenging instead of chasing. Your once perfect hearing dulls, making you more vulnerable. Your teeth wear down from years of crunching through insect exoskeletons. By ten years old, you're ancient in fennec terms. Your once glossy fur has dulled, and those magnificent ears might even droop a little. You spend more time in your burrow, venturing out only when necessary. Younger fennecs now dominate the prime hunting grounds, leaving the scraps for elders like you. In your final days, you seek the deepest, safest chamber of your burrow. The desert that once seemed full of opportunity now feels threatening. You curl up in the soft sand, your mate perhaps still by your side after all these years. Your breathing slows and you drift away, having survived a decade in one of Earth's most unforgiving environments. No small feat for a creature that weighs less than a bag of sugar. Your body returns to the desert that shaped you, your nutrients feeding the plants and insects that will, in turn, feed the next generation of fennec foxes. Your descendants will continue to roam the sands, their ridiculous ears swiveling to catch the faintest sounds of life beneath the surface. Life as a fennec fox might be rough, but there's another animal out there that has it way worse. Trust me, it's wild. Check out the video and see for yourself.